welcome to How Do You Drew? This is a Drew Barrymore podcast brought to you by thedrewzium.com. And sponsored by our friends at Positive Medium. I'm Anne. And I'm Ashley. And happy birthday, Anne. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is airing on Anne's birthday. Woo. Thank you. Ooh, Scorpio, baby. Yep. That's what me. are you doing? Anything special? Mm, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I actually sort of, not that I don't want people to acknowledge it because, yeah. you know, I'm on social media. Of course, people are going to like, no, because Facebook is like, it's their birthday. <laughs> Tell everyone. And they're like, oh, I haven't talked to you in, since your last birthday. Here's your birthday message. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm not planning on doing anything. Uh, It's one of those birthdays that's like on the cusp of like a major birthday. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like next year will be a bigger deal. But, okay. you know, who knows? I'm not a person who likes to make a big scene about myself. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. <laughs> but thank you. I appreciate sure, it. Sure. We still had to mention it. <laughs> yeah. My first uh, happy birthday was from a customer service person, like a healthcare phone call I was having. They're like, what's your birthday? I'm like, November 7th, 1984. They're like, oh, happy early birthday. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> definitely happened to me before. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's the best. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So we've had some big episodes and now we're going to do a little Drew's Flash because it's been a while and this is a way to catch up on all that stuff on the top that we haven't been doing. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> Let's do it. Um, we just want to mention again that we opened a Patreon. It's at patreon.com slash how do you Drew. Uh, we're still figuring out what kind of benefits we will give to our members there. But hey, come on over. Even if you do a dollar a month, that helps us. We work really hard on this podcast yes and I know we say we're sponsored but it doesn't mean we get actual money from that <laughs> <laughs> just means our website is hosted for free which hey that is not a small thing and we it's are very grateful to worthy, positive yes. medium. <laughs> thank you positive medium but you know a dollar a month like how much could that hurt you <laughs> do it <laughs> so if you can do it please do uh just give us a little bit extra encouragement that who knows if we need it we're pretty self-motivated but you know what we still want it <laughs> All right. So uh, would you want to talk about Halloween a little bit? Yeah, I just want to mention. So this was 25 years ago, exactly 25 years, Halloween 1998. I did a very last minute Casey Becker outfit, like literally <laughs> the night before a party, mm -hmm. like got a sweater of my mom's. We had a white cordless phone in the house and <laughs> went to Party City, <laughs> literally Party City for a wig. That's amazing. Also, like the thing that comes up if you type in Casey well, Becker lost you. <laughs> yeah. So that's the thing is that like I just like put on some jeans and some tennis shoes. That is not accurate to what Casey wears. Yeah. But I think because it is always been one of the top results in Google Images for Casey Becker costume. It becomes like the guide for people. Yeah. So a lot of people wear jeans and white tennis shoes when they do Casey. And I'm like, I think it's my fault. <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm giving myself too much credit, but it seems like I've even seen like fan art of Casey wearing the tennis shoes that are very similar to mine in that picture. It's weird. Oh my God. Anyway. So this year I was like, I'm going to write this wrong. It's been 25 years to the day. I have the screen accurate phone. I don't know if I mentioned that on the show. I finally, like I decided I was going to do this. Yeah. I've been looking for that phone for years. I manifested it as soon as I make, like pulled the plug, like, I mean, pulled the trigger. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, let's do this costume. So I had the phone and yeah, nice. it was just really fun. I was really hoping a lot of people would be like, whoa, but I don't know. Maybe it's not as like known as I think it is. Do you mean in person reactions? Yes, 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 okay. yes. But yeah, it was really fun. I was happy to do it. And I made uh, my husband dress up as poor Steve out in the backyard with his Letterman's jacket. <laughs> it was pretty perfect though. Yeah. And then on actual Halloween night, I had my um, my baby girl. She was in like a little ghost face black onesie. So I thought that was kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I think it's perfect. I'm glad you did your homage to yourself and homage to Drew. <laughs> exactly. Did you dress up at all? No, I didn't do anything okay. for Halloween. And mm. it, it, I'm in such a like remote area that we don't even right. get trick-or-treaters yeah so I like last like the day before Halloween I was like should I get a pumpkin and I'm like it's really just for me yeah so I didn't do anything I had some leftover Halloween candy the next day at work oh okay well that counts <laughs> and you have an, a Donnie Darko outfit on today I do so I'm in <laughs> costume today I actually am Donnie Darko at heart so this is just me <laughs> Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's just your normal state. 
I went to Walmart, got a clearance uh, pajama set of skeleton theme, and I'm Donnie Darko immediately. It's perfect. <laughs> uh, and if you guys haven't listened to our last two episodes, we did a huge love letter to Donnie Darko, and then we got to interview Frank himself, James Duval. Yes. So go listen to those, number 58A and number 58B. We are really proud of them. Yes. I know maybe you're coming here fun. for a short episode, but if you want to go and get one of our like chunky ones, please. Very chunky. <laughs> <laughs> the meaty. Yes. We're very proud. I'm very excited that we did that. It's been a long time in coming. I keep saying labor of love because like that's what it felt like to me. Absolutely. Something fun on the Drew Barrymore show for Halloween, I see. <laughs> <laughs> so the theme of the show was a very hairy Halloween. So everybody kind of did like a look of somebody with famous hair. Okay. And <laughs> Drew did Bob Ross. Naturally. Picture. Yeah. Well, we had like caught, like somebody from the show had posted like a picture behind the scenes of the show the day they filmed. And you could see in the background on the monitor, I was like, I think Drew is dressed as Bob Ross. It's so iconic though. I'm like, I think it it's works. Really it's, it's hilarious. The one picture she took of herself and you can like <laughs> see how realistic the like chest hair looks. Oh yeah. Stuff. She was into the chest hair. Oh God. <laughs> and I didn't watch the show, so I didn't get to see it in action. Oh, okay. You definitely should watch it. She's like kind of trying to talk like him. <laughs> I, I honestly, I don't really know what his voice sounds like, okay. but she's got that like, Groovy, chill voice, man. Oh and it totally God. reminded me of that sketch in SNL 99 with Will Ferrell, where she's like, I live in cars. I don't want to wait in them. <laughs> like, that's what she was talking the whole episode. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Ross was definitely like, oh, my God, are you going to do this the whole time? <laughs> it was actually really fun. So Ross dressed as Dolly Parton. And when they did the cooking segment, his like nails and his like beads and everything just kept like falling off. And that was actually the best part. In I my did opinion. watch a clip of that. And I was <laughs> okay. so focused on the nails that I couldn't like <laughs> pay attention to anything else. Like the idea of like a fake nail being in food, like really grossed me out. I know. And it was chilly. Ew. <laughs> he was like, this is my corn chip substitute. <laughs> nasty oh my god amazing and then I just want to mention we did do an Instagram poll on our account Drewzium at Drewzium and uh I took a picture of the bearded Drew in Charlie's Angels yes. and then Drew with her beard for Bob Ross and I said which bearded Drew do you prefer <laughs> and Charlie's Angels won by a landslide like it was classic. no contest <laughs> it's classic <laughs> so good um yeah Drew so much respect <laughs> I know I would never. I'm way too vain to ever do something like that. She went for it. Yeah. All right. Um, you noticed something really fun. Okay. So a couple weeks ago we talked about the F1. We don't even know if it's a segment for the show. I guess it would do we know yet? I'm pretty sure it is. I know she went to Austin for some sort of Formula One training or, or event. That's all. Okay. I could tell you ask your boyfriend <laughs> yeah he, I'll, I'll just have him come on and put a little segment and describing the whole thing that'll be the drew splash it'll be all about f1 um so i noticed that in one of the pictures where drew's wearing like a pit crew outfit that they had her wear you can see that she has writing on her arm which is like such a like drew thing it's such a like old school thing yeah and i i was like oh there's something on her arm and i did notice it says time and then it looks like you noticed it on the show yeah, so she actually pointed it out on the show. So it must have been filmed because it's the same exact writing. They must yep. have filmed these pretty close together. Um, but she showed it on the show and she said that she recently went through something that was the most difficult thing since her divorce. Ooh. I think we can all infer it was probably the, the writer strike drama. Oh, that's a good guess. And then she realized that time is what helps with these things. So mm. she wrote it on her arm because she used to do this all the time. If you guys yeah. don't know, Drew used to write on her arm a lot. Best examples are in Charlie's Angels Full Throttle. She has yes. like three different things on her arms in the movie. It also makes me want to compile handwriting on yeah. Drew's arms pictures. That's a fun idea. Project. <laughs> Anyway, I know we've mentioned it on the pod. So if, to me, this felt like a follow-up. Like, there yeah. she goes again. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. One other little update from the show, because you had correctly guessed something here. Okay. So Polly Shore was just on the Drew Barrymore show, which I thought was kind of a fun combo to see them together. Yeah. And you had said, I don't even know why this came up, but you 
were pretty sure that her character Mitzi Bananamore, this like old yeah. comedian lady, was based on Polly Shore's mom. Yep. Uh, who is also Mitzi? Is that right? Oh yeah, her name is Mitzi. Well, she used to run the comedy show. The comedy the Shore. Comedy Shore. <laughs> But it was like, it's such a unique name. And mm-hmm. even though I didn't know her personality, I kind of like filled in the gaps that that had to be. So they confirmed it. <laughs> so they confirmed it. Well, it was funny because uh, Polly started talking about how much Drew um, made his mom laugh. Like if she was Aww. ever on TV, his mom would say she's so funny. And of course, Drew was like, you know, flabbergasted honor. with excitement over yeah. that. Like the biggest comedy honor in the world to her. And yeah, she said, I do a character and he knew about it too. And yeah, they had confirmed. So I thought that was cool because you totally called that. Nice work. <laughs> <laughs> and then they also said that um, Mitzi and Polly used to babysit Drew because Drew's mom worked at the comedy store. We should mention that as a waitress. Oh yeah, that's right. And I remember Jay Leno saying that he used to help babysit her too. And now I'm like, I bet it was just at the comedy store. Yeah. Now I'm realizing that's probably why. Yep. That tracks. But that's so cool. I love those little tidbits. I'm just going to do one more follow up, just kind of promoting a little bit our pets episode, which (laughs) we re released. And I just wanted to get some love. Tell your friends about it if they love their (laughs) dogs and cats. I do feel like it's cursed in some way. I'm like, why won't people like this episode? (laughs) We like it a lot. If you have any thoughts about why this episode is not getting love, write us in. (laughs) People just hate animals. (laughs) But I just wanted to give it a little promotion. Who knows? If you're listening to this, you probably listened to that. But And it's number 56. Yes? Yes. 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 Episode 56. Howdy, Howdy, Droobies. We want to tell you about our sponsor, Positive Medium. We've actually been clients of theirs for at least 10 years, and they take care of all of our website needs for thedrewzam.com. They offer custom web design and professional coding, search engine optimization, marketing, and hosting. So we've been hosted by them, but we've also been able to take advantage of a lot of their expertise in these other areas as well. Absolutely. So customer service is the biggest draw for us with this company. They have saved our site literally from obliteration (laughs) quite a few times, but then they also help us with minor issues in just like literally a matter of minutes. So if we have like a coding question or just like something on the back end we can't figure out, we reach out to them and we get an answer back and the issue is solved within moments. We're so excited that Positive Medium is allowing us to offer our listeners 25% off managed WordPress hosting plans using our promo code DREW, D-R-E-W, of course. Um, And if you want to take advantage of this, visit positivemedium.com. We really, really vouch for these people. They've been so great to us and will continue to be great to us, I I can only imagine. (laughs) I mean, they're great by offering this to our listeners. So take advantage. Again, it's promo code DREW, of course. (laughs) Okay, so we get some of our fun segments we haven't done in a couple weeks. So what did Drew declare her love for this past week? I love love. Ooh, we have a lot. Love so remember, it. I was like, I don't know if she's being self-conscious and not doing it as much. Well, she made up for it. So <laughs> buckle it. in because we've got a long list. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. All right. Drew loves yoga. So okay. I just came from my yoga class and I'm yes. super sweaty and stinky. Yes. <laughs> Uh, she loves cornstarch. Okay. A Brussels sprout. Mm, me too. Cream corn. Mm. Relationships. Okay. Love. She loves love. As our audio tells us. <laughs> Fajitas. Okay. Giada De Laurentiis's website. <laughs> so specific. Very. Um, when people dye noodles pink. <laughs> oh. The Drew Barrymore shows trophies. Okay. <laughs> A bean in a chili. <laughs> okay. Just one. A potato skin. Yeah. I love when it's one, a singular. Yeah. Cards, like greeting cards. Okay. Cleaning. We knew that. Uh-huh. And finally, the lyric, hi, it's me. I'm the problem. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> I relate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we know how she feels about herself, so the tracks. <laughs> Yes. And then I threw in a bonus hates. Every once in a while, Drew tells us she hates something. She okay. hates sleeping in socks. <laughs> oh, 
it's interesting, you know, as someone who lives on a on a coast that like gets very cold and lately mm-hmm. it's been like in the 30s. <laughs> if I get into bed and I don't have my socks on, sometimes I'm like the only thing that's going to make me comfortable right now is putting yeah. socks back on. Having but, your feet warm. Yes, but sleeping in socks and having them like spin around like ew, waking yeah. up with them like <laughs> I like how you said ew it's perfect like yeah if like the heel ends up on top it's just like ugh. my friend Clarice used to do this thing she called elf socks where she would tuck her pajama pants into the socks and then everything kind of stays secure <laughs> it works well that's really cute you know what I forgot this so I should have put this in our follow-ups because I wish we had known this for our fire starter and cat's eye episode okay but when Giada De Laurentiis was on the show this past week if you don't know, her grandfather is Dino De Laurentiis, who produced both of those films. Mm-hmm. And he had given Drew a necklace when she was a little girl, and she wore it when Giada came on. Oh, so cool, right? Yeah. It was really neat. I, I was love that she still that. had it. Same, I know. It was really neat. Oh, that's so they sweet. They shared that on Instagram, I think, so we'll we'll link to that video. All right, so we've got some mail. <laughs> You've got mail. We do. Um, our wonderful friend Katie, we've mentioned many times on the show. We love you, Katie. Katie from the UK. You're the best, Katie. She left a really sweet comment on our YouTube interview with James Duval. If you guys hey. haven't watched that interview, you can watch the full thing. And uh, he does show some pretty cool stuff. So it's definitely worth getting your eyes on that. Yes. And in the comment, Katie said, Ooh, I love this, especially James showing you the eye prosthetic. So awesome. What a great Mm -hmm. exclusive and candid chat with James. Thanks so much for making this happen and sharing this. I can't wait to rewatch Donnie Darko and see if I can spot him in some other scenes. Yay. (laughs) Thanks, Katie. You totally got like the whole point of why we did that. (laughs) Katie, you're just the best. I mean, you're like one of our biggest supporters by far, and we're so grateful. She's our first patron actually that's right (laughs) katie thank you again we're just gonna forever be in your debt for all the love you give us like you're the best yes (laughs) okay and then we've got some more fun nice things kind comments corner (laughs) yeah i just pulled this i don't even remember what video it was it doesn't really matter but i pulled this from instagram it's from marissa underscore padilla and she said you are such a beam of light in such a dark world we need more of this energy and of course that's for drew I know, i'm like oh it sounds like it's for us but it's for drew <laughs> i mean how many times like we've said is drew called like a light or a yeah. light in the world or a, or a light you know? coming out of the top of her head <laughs> <laughs> yes so yes agreed we need more of this energy that we love about drew into the world <laughs> i love that yep that's what we're okay. here for yes okay so what did you pull for this week in drew history Okay. I like this one. This is a fun one. So on November 8th, 2011, Drew photographed a bunch of music artists. I will Mm -hmm. list them in a second. She did this at her house, her former house in Los Angeles that we Mm -hmm. love that house. We've talked about it many, many times. Yes. And she photographed all these musicians for V magazine. It came out in spring 2012. So she basically had a house party at her house. It kind of looks like it goes like all day into the night. Everyone's like jumping off the roofs into the pool. Like just (laughs) there's like flip cups and all kinds of stuff going on. Um, There's an awesome behind the scenes video by her frequent video collaborator, Omar Logda. So we'll link to that. But yeah, the people who were involved were Mac Miller. And I think he passed away. He died in 2018. Yeah. Wow. So sad. Weird. Um, okay. So Mac Miller, Mayor Hawthorne, The Peach Kings, M83, Spank Rock, War Paint, Audra May, and The Almighty Sound, Lord Huron, and The Drums. So it was a big old group. And uh, Drew's old friend and flower film staffer, Brent Kyle, is in a lot of this too. So uh, you can cool. like recognize him in the background. But yeah, there's so many great photos and that video is just incredible. And yeah, it was just a fun. It was kind of like early days of Drew doing some professional photography for publications. That's so cool. And her house. I miss that house same makes me so sad (laughs) i mean one of many parties that she held there that man if we could just be a fly at a wall at one Uh, of them one of the halloween parties oh Oh, my god that one in 2008 (laughs) there were so many photos that were on like 
I don't even know if it was Facebook. It might've been MySpace, but yeah, yeah, I have a ton of them saved and it looked like a real bash. There were yeah, this- so many people at that party, like known people. We'll have to yes. talk about that another time. But that's a good pull. This is like, it's it, it encapsulates so many things of that moment. It's like this like playful time in her life, photographer drew. And she was probably just about to be pregnant with Olive because, yeah, she wouldn't quite be yet, but real close. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. That's cool. I, it's weird. I didn't, like, think of those things aligning time-wise. I always just associate the photography with that because it was sort of like, I got to try something different. That's right. Because that Charlotte Gainsbourg shoot, she's, like, super pregnant. Yep. Yep, oh, exactly. Oh, good point. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, all, right. all right. So what's new with Drew? And this is probably going to be our chunkiest segment, but it's still going to be <laughs> short. So let's get into it. Okay. I just thought this was worth mentioning. So Gwyneth Paltrow was on the Drew Barrymore show mm-hmm. and Drew told Gwyneth that she's been seeing the same guy that she met on Raya three and a half years ago on and off for all that time. Even though she's always hmm. talking about how she's so single. <laughs> well, you could be seeing someone and still not be yeah, committed. But it is true. kind of interesting to be like three and a half years. I know. I mean, do we think it's either of the people that we like thought it might be? She didn't give it any clues. But okay. she did say that she had just invited him to a wedding. And that he was like, wow, after three and a half years, you're finally inviting me to a wedding. He was like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> But I thought that was interesting because I did see one small rumor that she was at Francis Bean Cobain's wedding, which oh, was in early October. To um, Tony Hawk's son. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Which I just realized, like, wasn't Tom Green really good friends with Tony Hawk? Probably. He was, Tom Green was, like, really kind of in with the skater crew yeah, for some that's reason. Right. Interesting. I know. And I remember, like, she had, I don't think she's been part of Francis Bean's life in a really long time yeah, but maybe but it's they possible. like yeah and which I just thought that was a really sweet thing to imagine especially because she was Drew's flower girl at her wedding to Tom Green oh my god I forgot about that well and also it was, I guess it's worth mentioning that Drew is Francis Bean's godmother quote unquote yeah quote unquote <laughs> although it's I think just like Steven Spielberg is right. Drew's great godfather. It's sort of like this an honorary title. Yeah. And I also actually I had a conversation the other day with my man Jared. And he's like, Oh, do you know who? Because we looked up about Francis Bean. Oh. I was like, Wait, did you know about this? <laughs> and he goes, Oh, do you know who her godmother is? I'm like, duh. Of course I do. Dude. Supposedly. <laughs> but then he also was like, um, did I, I think I was just like pondering, wondering if Drew ever met Kurt. And I think she came into their lives kind of after Kurt Cobain died. Correct. And I know there's like maybe brief mention of this in movie line 95, but I don't think she ever crossed paths with him. I don't think so either. I think literally they start, I think she started dating Eric like a few months after he died. Yeah, it was very close to the time. But then I'm thinking like, remember how she met Eric at that place called Jabberjaw that we looked into a bunch of its oh, history. Yeah. And I know Nirvana would like play there. So maybe, maybe, maybe like in passing. Um, I did one other thing though. I don't know if when you were in, doing your research about Francis Bean's wedding that, you, did you see that Michael Stipe officiated it? No. So I didn't look into any detail. Okay. Do you remember that Michael Stipe is her honorary or whatever godfather? Oh yeah. Okay. So, so I think that Drew probably was there. I hope so. And she Aww. was in California at that time because she did a couple things for the show in California. And that's where she interviewed Gwyneth. So I guess we'll have to see if there's any proof of this that comes out. I'd love to see something. I know. I'm like, clearly people were told to not take any pictures. <laughs> which, yeah. No, I can't blame them. It's, it's interesting how it's like high profile, <laughs> you know, but yeah. also it's like Frances Bean. It seems like she's had like a pretty private life overall. Yeah, I was almost right? wondering, like, maybe exclusive photos will go to People Magazine or something. We can I hope. guess we'll see. <laughs> okay, what else we got? Do you remember back in late May that there was a new flower beauty shoot that we saw was done? I think one of the models posted on TikTok. Yeah, there were some cute videos. 
Well, nothing ever came of those. And I remember just being like, what the heck happened to that shoot? Well, finally, some of the photos are showing up on flowerbeauty.com. Cool. Um, our wonderful friend Renata from Drew Barrymore Brazil was the one to point that out to me. Very cool. And then Renata, again, props to you. I think on Twitter, she found somebody posted a picture of the new issue of Drew Magazine. Oh. I'm guessing a holiday issue. And the cover photo is also from that shoot. So it's Drew and four other models. So do we share that yet? I don't know. Maybe we keep it under wraps <laughs> until we get our personal ones in the mailbox. Yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully very soon. Cause we got the other one like <laughs> super early. Remember? Right. And it looks like this person also got theirs early. So maybe, and we did a live on Instagram last time and got, went through the magazine. So maybe we'll do that again. I would love it. Hopefully we get them really soon. So yeah. everybody who's listening, keep an eye out. And da -da. Very cool. I just went to the website really quick and just saw a couple of them on the front page. They're such sweet pictures. Yeah. And they were done at that like place that Barrymore Brands like rents some like apartment somewhere yep. that they do all their photo shoots. Yeah. <laughs> and you can see in the background of one of them, like some of the framed art that's offered on, on Walmart. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> the beautiful items. I can't wait for the issue. Yeah, me too. Okay, what else? Did you see any of this clip of Teresa Caputo, the Long Island medium? No. You remember when she was on last year and she did a reading like out of nowhere for Mr. Daniel? Yes. And like oh it was stuff about his mom. Yeah. Yeah, that was so that. touching. And I'm not super into this, but sometimes yeah. I get the I start to tap into that emotional. Yeah. I mean, people are thinking about someone who's gone. You know, what whether or not what she's doing is legit, it's still a conversation that's going to bring up like it's going to pull heartstrings, you know. That's so funny. You like basically took the words out of my mouth because I was going <laughs> to say like whether you believe in that or not, like regardless, Drew got very emotional with her on the show. I think this is a clip we'll definitely want to link to, but she said she kind of just like had this realization right in that moment for the first time in her life. I've just had such a yearning my whole life for family. And all of a sudden, when you talked about how somebody could be waiting for them on the other side, that maybe that is when I'll be with my family, you know, because uh, they died all before I was born. And I never pictured them mm -hmm. being there. So um, that was really exciting. Mm. I mean, we're always talking about that, how she's just like tries to connect with them through right. like her TV in her kitchen where she plays yeah. like, <laughs> like Turner classic movies all the time or whatever she says to see her yeah. family. Yeah, but like, Aww. it was like, she was like, I've never thought about this before until this moment. She, you know, Aww. got really emotional. It's very sweet. Aww. Aww. Yeah. So we'll share that. Love that thought. Just like the sentiment is so sweet. Totally. And she also shared the story that's in Wildflower about how after her dad died and she was in Joshua Tree, like the door opened at sunrise mm. and she was like, dad. Oh, it's cool to hear her like talk about them again. Okay. What else you got? Oh, we got a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so Drew did in a announcement video for Paramount. They are doing something called Expedition to Vegas. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> to my town uh, for the Super Bowl. I guess the Super Bowl is here this year. I had totally forgotten that. <laughs> yeah. And you're in your small town. Who, who would have thought? <laughs> I know. You think it'd be bigger news. No. <laughs> and so it's kind of vague and hard to understand. I had a bunch of people being like, is she going to Vegas? And I'm like, I don't think so. But also it's like, if she's going to Vegas for the Super Bowl, it's like how much more unattainable can she get than like be at like the big one of the biggest events in the country you don't think i can just stroll down there and find it i mean you might be able to parking might be a little difficult but other than that yeah that could be an issue <laughs> but basically like paramount's doing this 100 day countdown to the big day um yeah. and there's like going to be traveling fan events around the country i do not think drew is going to be on these traveling fan events <laughs> I'm very curious why she's the spokesperson. Like it's, I'm, it's cute. It is cute, but it's confusing, right? I want to know what more is going to happen because it doesn't feel like, and I'm going to be traveling the country. She's just like, no. and we're doing a countdown. We Paramount. Yeah. 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 Um, I did think this was fun. I guess the iconic Paramount mountain and their logo is going to be constructed on top of the Mirage volcano on the strip. <laughs> yeah. I get to peek at that. 
Um, but maybe <laughs> she'll come for the Super Bowl. Who knows? We'll see. I'll be uh, I'll be checking in on things. And with your connections, <laughs> you'll be sitting like right next to her. <laughs> Absolutely easy. Yeah, and, che- and cheering on your team because you're such a football fan. <laughs> Go football people! Whoever's gonna Go be. Do we even know ball. yet? I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Um, and frankly, we're not sports people, but. We will be watching out for any of the stuff that has to do with Drew. Yeah, we'll see. (laughs) Okay, last thing, and this is really sweet. So Bumble, which just happens to be where I met my husband on that Uh dating app, they are coming out with a Bumble for Friends, which acronym is BFF, which I thought was really cute. That is cute. (laughs) Um, And anyways, they did an event in New York, and Cameron Diaz was there with her wine, Aveline. I think they were a sponsor of the event, and Drew attended. Oh, and the picture you posted in here is so sweet. I know. I love seeing them together. So, Me too. Because I noticed that Cameron was on The Tonight Show promoting the wine this past week. And oh. I'm like, why didn't she come on Drew's show? <laughs> it made me a little like, oh. So anyway, at least they did something together. <laughs> I feel like, do they have her on like once a season for something? Yeah, I think it probably has been about Cause, that. Because she did like the Drewber Yes. I'm trying to think of other segments. Was, was, she, was she at the episode when you were there in LA? Yes, she was there for that. Obviously, the very first episode ever, she was like projected in from LA. Oh, that's right. Lucy. Yeah, that's yeah, right. you're right. She's been on a lot. I don't know. I was just like, well, that would have been fun. But at least they were hanging out. Yeah, we always love to see them. And it's rare that we see like personal pictures of them. I can only think of a few like candidates here and there obviously with charlie's angels but like their personal pictures like they've been friends for such a long time there are probably so many sweet images Ugh. of them over the years like on vacation yeah. obviously we want to respect drew's privacy but also like we love her so much and we love her and cameron together so much <laughs> like i do remember there was a post i don't know if it was for cameron's birthday or what it was for i don't remember but drew shared like a carousel of like six photos and they were all new to us and one <gasps> of them my favorite one i remember was the year that 2002 when they went to the playboy mansion halloween party and it was a really cool photo of them from that is that ringing a bell no but i feel like we need to find it and share them oh, again. Just i mean to... i don't have to find it i know where it is oh great <laughs> <laughs> uh let me direct you to our drive <laughs> and it slash 2002 slash <laughs> i really do want to go <laughs> yeah you need to look at it i'll look at okay. it too Candid. that's awesome 2002 we're going into the archives <laughs> into the archives this is how it works you hear the like creaking vault door <laughs> there's some dust on this one hold on <laughs> it is 10 26 and 2002 okay i'm clicking so there had been a picture in Playboy magazine of Cameron, Luke Wilson, and Drew at the party. And like, that's how I recognized what this was from. Yeah. And she's wearing that striped shirt yes. that she always would wear back then. Oh, it's so pretty. It's really cool. I don't know what the heck Drew's costume is supposed to be, but I like it. <laughs> cool girl. <laughs> pretty cool girl. Gosh, I, I love that of both of them. Oh Me my too. We'll share that one. Okay, bestie, is that the end of this episode? <laughs> BFF, Bumble <laughs> yes. for Friends. I know I'm so bummed you didn't meet your man on Bumble because I was gonna be like, oh, cool connection. But yeah, you know, it was on Hinge for Friends, except I it guess wasn't for that. Friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it feels like a little short considering we've done such chunky ones in the last few weeks, but that's okay. That was the whole idea. Yeah, Give yourself a little editing break. I think you edited the Donnie Darko episodes for 10 hours or something insane like that. The first day I was editing, I spent like 10 hours on and off. So with breaks, but still, I was like, oh my gosh, see you guys toss her a buck. Like, (laughs) that's so easy. Go be patreon.com slash how do you drew. Thank you, Anne, for all your editing prowess. (laughs) (laughs) And also we need to make enough so that we can each get one of those necklaces like Drew's. Oh, that's right. The heart necklace. That's only uh, $1,500. Okay. So we need a (laughs) minimum of 3000 subscribers this month. Like, well, I, I actually would love to get it for my birthday. So if I can have perfect, <laughs> so if I can get 1500 subscribers before this episode even comes out, guys, I'm going to be Easy. so happy. I'm going to be so happy. I'll be thrilled. That's the only thing I want for my birthday. Perfect. You guys heard it here first. <laughs> Help a girl out. <laughs> 
All, All right. right. Well, this is fun. I'm glad we're like caught up on Drew things because yes. we uh, needed to be. There was a lot to share. Yes, there was. And we have some fun stuff coming up in the next few weeks. So yes, stay tuned. we do. Stuff we've been <laughs> planning for a little bit and maybe have teased here and there. Some fun stuff. All right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to our little Drew's Flash mini episode. You can always go rate, review, and subscribe if you want to show us a little love. We always share the uh, reviews on Apple Podcasts that people leave on the show. So if you Mm want to hear us read your words back to you, go do that. Mm -hmm. And then follow us on Instagram at HowDoYouDrewPod and also at DrewZM for all other Drew-related content. And if you wanted more places to visit us on the internet, make sure <laughs> to visit our, <laughs> visit our website at howdoyoudrew.com. As always, we have episode pages for each episode, including this one, even though it's a little guy, we'll have some pictures in there. Definitely. Um, <laughs> send listener mail to howdoyoudrewpod at gmail.com and make sure you subscribe to our Patreon at howdoyoudrewpod. How do you I think drew? it's just how do you drew? <laughs> um, you can find us. You know, we got links everywhere. Links True. everywhere. Links galore, tidbits galore. <laughs> My question to take us out today, because you were talking about being stinky. What's your favorite <laughs> smell? Ooh, just one? I mean, if you have a combination, go for it. Let's say like citrus. You know, I'm obsessed with lemon and lime smells. Mm. Definitely. You know, I'll just leave it there. I'm going to leave okay. it at that. That's my answer. Okay, I'm going to go more like pumpkin spice vanilla. What like a basic this... bee. I know. <laughs> I'm such a basic bee. No, I love bee. that too, especially in fall. It just gives you that feeling. I was thinking about like candles, but I mm-hmm. feel like the essence of like citrus, like if you put like some orange in there with that, with some Ooh. like cinnamon and oh, Ooh. now I want like an orange cranberry scone. Oh my God. Mm. I love orange cranberry. I, did I ever tell you my favorite bagel place for a minute had cranberry orange bagel and it was so oh. good. And then they got rid of it and they like, don't think they're going to bring it back. I'm oh. like, Why? But my favorite texture with that is either like scone or like muffin. Yeah. Like cranberry orange muffin. Mm. <laughs> it always okay. comes back to food with us at the end. It always does. I was like, <laughs> let's go smell. And then we just go right back to food. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this special little Drew's Flash. And we will see you next Tuesday. Thank you much. Bye-bye. Happy birthday, Anne. Oh, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> This episode of the How Do You Drew podcast was researched and produced by Ashley and Anne from thedrewseum.com with help from our sponsor, Positive Medium. Special thanks to Matt Costa for our lovely theme song, Roxy Prima for our adorable logo, and last but not least, Drew Barrymore and all the Drewbies who love her. We do this for you. Thank Thank you. you.